power automate? So two questions. Question number one, what is power automate? Okay. So what is power automate? Hey, there's one more group I need to remind them. And they, they are the major mm -hmm. we've started. Okay, so that's done. So what is power automate? I am going to answer it in one, in two ways. First of all is where is power automate? Okay. So let me take us to power auto. Power automate is, is a Microsoft, it used to be Flow anyway. So it's a Microsoft product, right? So this is power automate. I don't, I hope you can see my screen. And you can hear me clearly too, I hope. Uh, can anybody signify if those two things are? Because <laughs> if you can't hear me clearly, okay. Good. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, awesome, great. So this is Power Automate. Let me grab for you the link so you can go check it out yourself. Uh, it used to be Microsoft Flow. Uh, but then they called it Power Automate. I think they want to keep to the pattern of calling some bunch of tools power. So there's Power BI, Power Automate, Power App. But then when Power Automate started, which is which, as you can see on my screen, you can see on the upper left, Power Automate. Uh, even though the website address is still retaining the flow address. Power Automate allows you to automate things. What, what do I mean by automate things? You can look at this, right? Let's let's go to templates. So maybe when I go to templates, you'll see a whole lot of um, different things you can automate. So you can automate. You can automate if an email comes into your Outlook, should it be pushed into your Dropbox? Uh, you can automate. There's a, it's thousands actually. So so most times you rather want to check based on and the things you want to automate related to approval processes. Then you see a bunch of tools around that. Uh, are they related to email? And then you will see different templates already patterned towards that. Are they related to social media? Let me look for social media. Okay, I'm not seeing social media here. And let's even go to the featured, right? So this is power to me. Before now, I used to use a product called. I don't know if you have heard of this. If this, then that. It sounds the name is funny, but it does the work awesome. Like uh, I never thought I would give power Microsoft's power to me. Then used to be flow any second look because I was like, nah, no way they are going to match with these guys. Uh, actually, they are not trying to match, but they are doing their own in a very, they've taken the game to another level. Imagine we are playing, uh, imagine we are playing draft and somebody comes into the industry and is playing on a chess level. That's what Microsoft is doing. So they kind of just made it look like these guys were chasing crumbs and they are going for like a whole bigger kind of stuff, right? But then let me show you so that I take you through a journey of how I got into this space and maybe it will help you begin to see. So before now, before Power to Meet, these were the guys that were the ones we all know. I've been using this, uh, if this, then that, I think since 2012. And uh, maybe later on. What do I do with it? Uh, I, I'm active in the social space. So I have a Twitter account. They say I should be careful with when I log into things. By the way, Twitter is now banned in Nigeria. I hope they won't. The, the ban does not affect logging in. At least I didn't post. I'm not posting. <laughs> so anyway, let me pull this here. Uh, maybe the ban is reload. It's not loading. So nonetheless, what I want to show you doesn't even require the full thing loading. What I want to show you is just a matter of, you can see this Twitter account, it has 119,000 followers, right? I'm not 
I'm not anywhere near social. Yeah? If you SMS me today, it might be next week I will reply you. You know, if you WhatsApp me today, well, WhatsApp because I can I sleep uh, when I'm about to sleep at night and check it. Maybe I'll WhatsApp you back tomorrow. But then I'm the worst kind of person with social media, right? How then did I grow a, a an account that now has over 119,000 followers? Uh, this is the secret, this guy here, right? So what it allows me to do is, allows me to set up things, it allows me to say, you know what? I write articles, I do videos, I do this, I do that. So I can say, you know what? Uh, they're saying I've exhausted my free limits. Uh, let me look for which one I can use to demonstrate. Uh, let me pick one of this guy and use it to demonstrate. I can say I want to connect. Okay, let's go here to explore. So I can say I want to connect uh, my Twitter to my blog. So whenever I post on my blog, it should post on my Twitter, right? Uh, I can say I want to connect Instagram to this. So they focus more on social media and the things individuals like people who are upward social mobile oh, what's the word to use now guys who almost live all their lives on the internet but individuals right so all the things we individuals use and then also home automation if you use google voice google assistant filter so they focus more on the individual guy if you do something on wordpress you can connect your wordpress to your twitter to your email to your youtube to your so that was their own game plan to your google calendar and all so it was it worked nicely for me because I was always a Luna. Whatever I was doing was things I was doing just for myself. Then there's another one, Zapier. Maybe you've heard of Zapier. Zapier is really popular. Sorry. I've been running this session since 2 p.m. So I've not even had a chance to take proper lunch. Zapier decided to do, if these guys were going after the enthusiasts, the hobbyists, people who just want to connect things on a play level, on a, like, there is no corporate plan for this. They were just focused more on individual guys, right? That's this, if this, then that. Zapier decided to focus more on corporates. So they call their own Zaps, automate workflows, right? Uh, let me see if I can show you their own explore. So you can connect your CRMs. Uh, like if you use if you use some of these um, if you use QuickBooks some of these accounting software, you can connect it such that. And then if you use some e-commerce site, if somebody buys something, something will go. Like they focus more on business. More on, let me see if I can show you stuff around marketing. So they focused more on helping uh on corporate let me use our word they focus more on the corporate clients or people who are going to be using it for serious business needs right so this is the zapier and they are the biggest anyway so i never saw a space that microsoft was trying to fill with their own it looked like everybody already was uh had somewhere they go if you are interested in social media and play kind of stuff you want to connect to your amazon echo to your to your email google drive to these if this then that have you uh covered then if you needed to combine things combine things that were work related you want to combine com connect your mailchimp which is for for email marketing you want to connect it to to something else upspot to let's just go to most popular of all categories Maybe this will help you. Uh, let's go to Collapse. Google Sheet, connect it to Gmail, connect to Slack. So you can see that they, they Discord, they have a whole lot. Connect Airtable to Typeform, to connect your Stripe to YouTube, to Google Form. Someone fills a form on Google Form, it goes through your Gmail, automatically emails him based on the opportunity as big. Connect to Zoom, connect. You know, you can see that there is a lot of enterprise kind of tools in here that they have gathered together. So they are still, by my judgment, the biggest in the space. But enter Power Automate. 
so Microsoft did something that nobody saw coming. Ready? Two things. Is that no? That's looking like three. Two things. <laughs> so two things, huh? Number one, Microsoft decided to be like the Amazon of this space. While this guy, these Zapier people were focusing on, on enterprise majorly, and this, if this then that was focusing on just uh, more of the hobbyists, individuals, people who just want to connect things and move on with their life, but not really tied to their work. Microsoft decided to do everything. So they wanted to connect everything that concerns you, right? And they gave it some twists. So they made it to be so well integrated with enterprise software beyond the level these other guys could do, right? So with the Microsoft tone, you can go much deeper. When I, what do I mean by much deeper? I can begin to connect things on. So let's see, I'm going to go to create. So when I go to, let's go to home first. So I go home menu. You know, I've shared this link. In case you are just joining and you don't have the link, let me share it once again. So if you go to this link, you are going to see the Power Automate, right? So uh, if you go to home, right? Then if you click on create, good. So you can decide you want to create from scratch. You can decide you want to create uh, things that are related to cloud blah, blah. Let me go to where the game changing starts from. Can you see this install? There is a power automate desktop. Imagine you automating the stuff on your PC, on your computer. That's what I mean, right? They wanted to connect everything. What's on your computer? What's on the cloud? Enterprise, uh, social media, everything. So you want to install this, then it has a gateway. Gateway means I can be able to set it up even from my phone when I'm done, when I'm done with that connection. Then on my phone, I can go to flow on my phone. I can say whenever, where is flow on my phone? I have it on my phone. I can go on my phone. I can go on my phone. By the way, I have this thing that lets my phone and my PC to talk together anyway. Uh, let me pull that up. And this is also Microsoft again. You know, man, those guys, I don't, I, I, I think they are, they, are on, they are drinking some kind of drinks that I don't know, like they are on some, some, what, what is it that sports people drink that they ban them and take their awards back from them? I think Microsoft guys are constantly drinking those things. Uh, where is, I'm lost here again. Where is that thing that once you click on it, your phone shows? Oh, they need my phone permission. Anyway, let's forget about that anyway. The key thing is once you install it, so this is what it looks like. Once you install it, it shows on your computer and see all the things you can, you can automate. So this is power, this is still power to me too, but now this is the one on desktop. So the moment you come here, you click install, it will download. So I don't want to use up my data too much. So you see it will download. Maybe I should just show you that part. If you come here, you click download, right? It will want to download. So I'm not going to download because I've downloaded it before. My PC will want to pick it up. I'm going to cancel. And once you install it, Ta -da. In fact, so that you will not be confused, I'm going to close mine. I'm going to close everything. Don't save. Close. Close. Go here. See? Power Automate Desktop. Right? I open it. I launch it. I make it full screen. Right? I want to create a new flow. Right? So I'm going to call this flow test. Right? I say create. Then something will pop up where to ask me to be picking what I want to connect. Just wait for it. Aha, performance enhancing drugs, <laughs> steroids. Yeah. So I think they are constantly all drinking that stuff or you know using steroids because the things they are churning out these days. You think I think they have a army of uh, software engineers anyway, but uh, they are not the only ones with the engineers now. But the rate at which they are pulling pushing things out. So see variables. Da, da, da. So these are like intermediate steps. If I want to, they call them conditionals. Uh, so uh, you can use this to add conditions, iterate, shuffle a list. Let's zoom. 
I can use this to generate random number. Blah, blah, blah. So this, at least you can see for yourself. For me too, I'm I'm new to many of them. And then these are like logical conditions. You know, if this happens, you want this to two different things to happen. Maybe if a file exists, a folder exists, if you know all of that, then you go to loops. So you can create like for loop, exit loop, and this is a kind of no code. It will generate the code for you. So you don't have to be writing VBA or writing. There is no programming language with this. Though they try to call it expressions, but they do it for you. It's only if you want to go in there and start editing things. But you should be able to, the way they've built it, you'll be able to do all of this without writing a single line of code. You know, you can wait for a file, wait for a process, make sure the file is open before another step runs. You know, you can launch something that's like on your system. So I want to, this also blows out um, scheduler. Or maybe scheduler. No, I think this one even replaces the. So I used to use task scheduler for some things, right? With this, maybe I would never need to do that anymore. You know, so you can run application, run VB scripts, you know, run, let's go at it gradually, print a document. And you know what? You can control this from your phone. So whatever you set up here also gets pushed into the cloud, also gets picked up on the app on your phone and so you can control it you can say i want to trigger manually trigger a flow that i've created here maybe i want it to start playing a music on my phone or but something more serious now maybe you want it to anything because anything on your computer now you can control you know microsoft are the ones who made your windows operating system so you know anything this is the flow on the on the on the p on the phone so with um, once you install this guy and on the web you also need to on the web you need to install what we call get, gateway so the gateway allows your phone your your computer to push whatever you create here to the cloud one almost like if you have this power bi you understand what gateway does Aha, the same concept here. in fact the very same gateway that works for your power bi is the same one that you use for if i try to install this it will say I already have it installed. Why? Because I have installed the one for the Power BI one. So let, let me go on with uh, all the things you have there. Before I was planning to sh do a demo, but by the time I was going through all the options, I was like, you know, I don't mind if I spend the whole one hour showing you all the options available. Then another session, I will now do the demo I had in mind. So I can run an application. I can say, you know, I want it to, you know, so if you drag this here, you can now specify what application do you want it to run. So I can go to my uh, my my C drive. I can go to my program files. I can go and pick any application. I can see it should run. It should automatically launch an application. And remember what I said. Whatever you create here, you can be able to pick it up from your phone. So you can start controlling your computer from your phone, right? And doing things. You're no longer tied to whatever you do on your computer stays on your computer has no visibility and you can even send emails and it can it just blows there is no limitation anymore as far as internet connected devices computing devices are concerned you know they this brings everything together it's it's, it's really amazing i'm i'm still trying to 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 begin to check what i can do with it but uh, you know, to soak everything in first, then I start beginning to take it one by one and saying, let me pick something related to the system. But let's just keep going through. You can shut down your computer. So if you're a wicked person now, you can go install this on someone's PC with your own account. And because the person's PC will show you, but that's the advantage of Gateway. Gateway will say, oh, this is this person's PC. So you can trigger that his computer should be shutting down Anytime it talks to you one kind, you know, you just bring out your phone, you just manually trigger that flu and his computer is going to shut down. So <laughs> I think this is going to have a bad side, but that's how Microsoft does. Microsoft starts with, first of all, putting all the features, then later they start trimming down, start putting security processes, start removing, you know, so I'm sure they will remove some of these features or make them very difficult to implement because they sound dangerous. You know, why? And you know, if someone hacks your comp hacks your account, you're in trouble. It's just going to be doing all kinds of things with your PC. You can run Python scripts. You can you can uh, 
launch a file, copy a file, rename a file. So maybe with what Victor used to do with VBA about renaming like all the files in a folder. With this, I can. I just pick the folder. I had an iterator. Maybe I'll try and demo that one. And I won't need to know how to code. And then um, I can I can manually trigger it and I can tell it to be running every day like a task scheduled um, 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 activity, you know, system activity. So uh, let's just let's just be looking through everything before if there's time, then I'll do one or two demos. You can get into folders. You can, uh, I don't know what, okay, yeah, you can zip files on zip files. So you can make it zip files and then another flow will take the stuff and email it to people. So, you know, it's, they're trying to automate everything you do. This is like, you know, Excel, we'll say VBA automates anything you do in Excel. Now, this is like anything you do on your computer, whether locally or on the web, this guy is going to help you automate everything. It's kind of scary. Uh, you can extract, you can do form filling, you can extract data from any UI feature. So if we, an application that has a UI button, you can use this to get checkboxes, get things out. You can use it to fill forms. You can use it to grab a window, even move stuff around. Then, I uh, don't know why my PC keeps doing that. Then there's the web. So you, you can download from web. You can invoke a web service. There's web automation. You can go to a website and, and extract pages uh, data from there. You can get details of a particular web page, get details of elements on a web page, take screenshot of a web page. You can, so if you, if your guys that are working from home now, you can set this thing, a company can say, okay, you guys say you are working from home. You don't want to come back to office anymore. Even though we know Nigeria is like, we don't have Corona again. All the mosquito bites has uh, created the because that's the only thing everybody is kind of pointing out that is different in, in 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 this part of Africa. I don't think South Africa has those many mosquitoes, so they are suffering for it now. Uh, anyway, so the your your company can say, you know what, we have created a flow and it deployed organization wide, and it will be taking screenshots every 30 30 minutes or every 15 15 minutes throughout the work hour so if you are the one who your you are <laughs> you are watching movies throughout and it's only when the when there is a meeting going on you put the meeting you know you join the meeting you you minimize it you you are playing game on top or yeah you know, this one was, you take a screenshot and he's sending it into a repository you will tag it with your name and timestamp and then like that so you are caught so it can also launch uh, internet see now, they they want everything they didn't be the Microsoft of before we only let it launch Internet Explorer and Chrome the Microsoft of today we let it launch even the one they have not created if they have an idea of how to launch what has not yet been created they will add it here because they right now the way they are doing uh, uh, is what um, the telecoms guys used to call them um, uh, share of wallets where they believe everybody is using all the networks and they want you to use their own network more right so microsoft is like everybody's using everything so no problem use everything in fact i don't know if you guys noticed the microsoft guy who presented the uh, was it three weeks ago about office scripts it was on mac i don't know if you noticed it was on mac he was presenting you know i wanted to ask him but i didn't want it to sound like maybe i'm trying to sound funny I mean, or I'm like, whoa, you know, he's doing a presentation on B because that's part. I think there is a KPI for him attached to it. Or like, uh, it's something that is officially recognized. That's what he was doing for us. He does it for many communities and then he's using Mac, you know, so that's how much Microsoft do not care what you are using as long as whatever you are using, you are using it alongside their own or you use it to go into their own space, right? Excel. You can launch Excel. You can you can uh, uh, specify a default file database. You can tell it to execute a database uh, connection. Put a database connection. Retrieve emails from your Outlook, from Exchange, from whatever it is you are using. Launch Outlook. You know, get messages out. Track even your your mouse. 
you know, this is as if you have installed a key logger and a screen logger and everything logger on your PC. <laughs> Someone gets a hold of this, uh, your login details and all, you're in soup. Uh, you can even start, you can automate what you should type into different places, automate things related to date and time, maybe the act actions around date and time, extract PDF, things from PDF, uh, I don't command, oh boy. Even a command prompt, you know, you can launch it. And remember what I said, everything you do here, you can pick it up from the web. You can pick it up from the phone. You know, you can create a terminal session, this command point prompt anyway. You can do OCR, you know, or, um, how you recognize uh, text in images. You can do cryptography. I think we are at the end now of this. You can start, even automatically start or stop a service. So if you have a server that is always, there's a service only that sometimes needs to go off or that you need to restart whenever it hangs. You don't have to physically log, log into the server anymore. Just use this to create a flow that makes you toggle it, you know, that makes you like restart the service. So anytime you people are complaining, oh, uh, our, our ERP is, 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 is not working fine or it's slow, I can't post. Uh, what the bankers used to say, bankers say it has no drop, uh, network network issue. You know, I think maybe what they do most times is just to re reset, you know, restart the service. Maybe there are some people who they've logged in, they did not log out, and everybody has logged in, and they are now preventing the people who need to do transactions. When you reset, restart, it will log everybody out, and only the people that want to do stuff will, will go back in. And I just, on my phone, I just manually trigger the... The, the, the restart. In fact, and if I think this is to happen every 3 p.m. on a Tuesday or on a Friday afternoon, I will just set it to be always by itself be restarting the, the service, you know, at that time. So there's like a whole lot is useful for everybody, be you an IT admin person, uh, a data someone like me, even uh, AWS stuff that you have, you can come here to try to automate them. You want to start your AWS instance, stop this instance, you want to take a snapshot, you want to, oh, this is, this is like a deep, like I said, you know, it's like somebody going into an industry where they are playing drafts and he's just doing on a chess level, like you guys are, are chasing crumbs. He, Microsoft is like aiming a lot higher, you know, anything, they want to be able to automate everything. Now I get why they are calling power automate. They want to automate everything possible. Maybe one day you open this thing, you will see, as you are seeing cognitive, as you are seeing as well, you will see human being. Then I can be able to pick someone. Maybe I can pick uh, John, pick, you know, and then when I pick you and then I say, go and sleep, you go and sleep, and I can automate you. You know, maybe soon it will get to that level. And uh, so this is the last one of them, the uh, file transfer protocol, right? So this is the desktop. And I said, let me see if I, I can do a demo on oh, how many more minutes do I have? Okay, so we are half the time. Okay, uh, let me just check if anybody has left any message for me. Okay. So this is the desktop one, right? Uh, let me take you through the web one. On the web one, uh, okay, on the web one, I think I've shown us, right? You just go to Power to Make the email, the link I shared takes you here and you can pick anything, right? Uh, before I start doing a practice, a, a specific example, let's go now to Power BI. So if you're in Power BI, how do you make this happen? In fact, let's pick something that is not empty, right? So if I want to connect some of the things I've done in Power BI, I want it to maybe talk to something else. If um, So mo what most people like to give as illustration is if a, if a particular, if we eat a particular figure, maybe you should email some specific people. So I see a whole lot of tutorial around that online. Uh, or if something's happened, you should push the data into Excel for some people to be able to see. So let's just, let's see what we can, we can do while, I mean, before the time is over. So you need to first of all come here, say get more visual, then as usual it will launch the store stuff. 
the Power BI Visual, Power BI Visual Store. Then uh, just type Power Automate. Then you click Add. So let me um, let me zoom in. So once you click Add, you're going to see it here, right? So if I click that, I want to add it. Let's see where it makes sense for me to use this. So let's say I want to track, I want to track oil price, right? Maybe I want to track this Brent crude oil price. Whenever I go get to a particular figure, I want it to notify me or do something, right? So let's see. I <coughs> bless you. So I click on that power to me that I that I have. Huh? You know what? Let me start with an empty sheet first, so that maybe you get to see how it works. So let's let's let me open an empty sheet, an empty page. So at least you don't get distracted by the other things. Then we can take it to where there's something and then we can use it. So this is it. Once you add it, right, you need to click here and do edit. For you to set the control. But then uh, if you look at the steps, let's, let's just quickly look at the steps. So had the data that you want to have access to had that data in here first. So had those fields in here, right? Then you will now click on this edit that I'm talking about to now be able to connect it to the flow, right? Let me see what I can add. Let's quickly create something. So I'm going to create a new table. Okay, let's just create a dummy table. I'm going to call this first name. Last name. I'm going to call this. Uh, uh, I did one thing before now here. Yeah. So I'm going to call it your Power BI level. So you are supposed to pick between a level one to five. Then let's see your date of promotion. Most people don't like I me. Mean, for example, date of birth now. Uh, that will be the thing reason why they won't fill the stock. So let's say date of promotion at least, even if they are not promoted, they, will, they are very religious. We will say we are prophesying. So test table. I'm going to put in some dummy data. Mike, uh, I see my level is level four. Promotion date is today, 6th of June, 2021. Uh, I'm going to add some of us I'm seeing here. Yes, Samuel, Raji, let's give everybody else five. They have been promoted long ago. 2019. Let's add uh, who else am I seeing? Olola de Samuel. So maybe this is good enough. Let me give you for two. Maybe you are promoted uh, exactly end of last year. 2020. So I load in that table. So let's see what at least something we created together and see how we can use it to talk to something else that is not in Power BI at all. Okay, so I'm going to drag that test table, drag some things from it. So I'm going to drag, let me put all those information in there. So when they are there, we can decide to use them or not, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Okay, so good. Now that it's, oh, apologies, I dragged it into the wrong one. Remove, I should be dragging it here. First name, last name, promotion, uh, Power BI level, date of promotion. Good. So what we have done is, 
we have made we have made all these available inside here so we now go to step number two where we click on where is that edit stop edit and boom right it's going to show us the kinds of uh, things we can connect to uh it should have shown by now i don't know why it's taking time Okay, you can see it rolling. It's normally instant. I don't know why. Okay. So, so what do I want it to do? Do I want it to talk to Excel, push some information to Excel? Do I want it to push information to Teams? Do I want it to push information to a SharePoint list? Do I want it to create a task? Uh, and you can do some other things manually yourself. So let me use this one. Let's use this to Excel, right? So it will want you to log in with the accounts that uh, the resources will be in. So the Power BI will be your Power BI account. The Excel will be any the Excel account you want it to talk to, right? So because I've logged in before, it detected my details. So if you have not, it's going to ask you to log in. You will see it here. It's like add, I can even add more accounts and switch between them, but uh, these are the ones I want to use anyway. So I click on continue. <clears throat> so once I click on continue, uh, it's going to bring me now to where I start to con connect things. And remember what I said, no coding. So even if you don't know how to do it, you will end up knowing how to do it because just be picking all the options, one of the options will be correct. That's the advantage, it's like multiple choice. Huh? So you end up figuring it out eventually. Or like if it was coding, you don't know, you don't know it. It's nothing like a try and error. So I come here, you will see a whole lot of options. Okay, where do I want this thing to push data to? Uh, push it to OneDrive. I hope you can see my screen. Let me zoom. Huh? And then number two, uh, I see, in fact, I have only one option to pick. So that's an easy to answer one. Then it will try to detect all the files I have in my OneDrive um, environment, my Excel files. So which one should I use? I created a file for today. Yeah, so we, let's use this one, Office Power BI demo, right? And then uh, there will always, so dynamic content are things, as you can see the icon before Bill B. Yeah, beside it is a Power BI icon, right? So these are dynamic stuff from Power BI that I can pull and see? the first name, the last name. So all those things I've added. There's the one that comes with my session, me logging in automatically, makes available my username, my email, and my user ID, and timestamp. Then that one, those ones I added, the first name, the last name, the promotion date, the blah, blah, blah. You can see them here, right? So they are always available. So let, now let's go to the table, right? So let me zoom in again. So I have, um, I have a table there. And that table has some fields. So if I expand, I'm going to see the fields I have there. So uh, thank God I used some minutes before this session to do some bit of a, of preparation. So I had already created a Power BI, a, a, an empty table in Excel that has some of these fields. So it's asking me, what do I want to use as like a identifier field, right? So I'm going to say, let's say I use a field I call ID. Everything is empty. Maybe I can show you what it looks like. Uh, I didn't create it on this computer. I created it on my other computer. Uh, well, let, if it doesn't take too much time, let me see if I can log into my Excel online and show you what that empty file looks like. Okay, so this is it. It didn't take any time at all. Yeah. Microsoft can ask for password there. Eh? Uh, they now make it look like I uh, like the Google I use, like Math is easy with Google. Everything, you know, log in again, you log in, can ask you password. If I come back after the session and I try to do something, it can ask me to log in again. Uh, so see, empty, uh, this, they are all empty. Okay, so good. Now we've seen what the destination looks like. So let me zoom back. Uh, what do I want to put as the key value? 
So I don't know. I think it's just better to put something that is um, very, very unique that no two people we have. So let's look for what is like that. Timestamp, timestamp. I think. Hmm. Well, timestamp will be the same timestamp for everything. Uh, uh, well, it will complain. Let's just drop it there for now. <laughs> Maybe timestamp concatenated with. Um, joined with the person's first name. So what do I want to do? Uh, something has gone wrong. Let me, ex let me expand. OK, OK, good. So he's asking me for each. So for each record in that table, what should he do? Uh, Select an output from the previous step. Uh, what do I need to select from the previous step? OK, great. Let's start adding the names. First name. OK, good. So I wanted to add the data. And to each, I wanted to uh, add a row. I wanted to add a new row. So instead of this update, to be added, add a new row is what I want. So I'm going to add another action. So the action I want to add is related to Excel and is related to add add a row, add a row into a table. So I, I don't need this update a row because I don't even have anything there to update. So good. Uh, I'm tired of this question. So. Okay. So again, from which table, which which um which of my services, my internet is beginning to drag. I have this one. Then OneDrive. Then which file? So that file that we've seen what it looks like. Then what table? There's only one table in the file. Good. So I wanted to add awesome. Add the uh, I don't know what to yeah maybe timestamp here add the uh, first name here add the last name here add then uh, add promotion date here good so what your app is once this button is clicked, it will it will select from that table, go through every record. Again, it's selecting from this table, which sounds funny. Why is it selecting a second time? But like I said, it will it will show you options and you put the option there. You don't have to worry too much about the logical steps. So these are the things I wanted to insert. Uh, is there any other thing I wanted to do? I think that's, that's good enough for a test. So let's do save. Uh, saying something about storage limits which I don't understand. I've not done many things before now. So why, how did I exceed my workflow limits? And that's another thing with this thing. Huh? That was something I was trying to do. I eventually had to go and do it with my other apps, even though I wanted to use it as an opportunity to learn Power BI. So I think because they are doing things so fast too, sometimes some errors that you don't even understand just pops up. So this one, I don't even understand it. So let me just hit save again. Maybe it's those kind of errors that when you do the thing two times, it will go away. See now, imagine, now it's working. Huh? So I've shown you one trick of troubleshooting in power in, in anything Microsoft. If your computer is complaining or something, just do the same thing it was complaining about, do it again and and then, um, or power cycle, like turn it off and on, or blah, blah. So, uh, I think this is good. Let's save it. 
So I've saved this. I'm going to go back to my reports. And then I'm going to So we've done step number two. Let me zoom so you see. We are supposed to tie to a button. So that's the last thing. Apply and share to, I think we did that. So when we save, let me just be sure I did apply and share. By now I saved. Let's just be sure all what we did are saved. Okay, I think so. Yeah, apply. Apply. Good. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh -huh. Because this was what I was expecting to see. You know, you're supposed to see a button that you will now resize. So let's resize this button. So as to make it look cool, let's go dump it in an existing report sheet. Let's go squeeze out a space for it now. So maybe I put it here. Okay. So what should happen is if you hit this button, if you click on it, then it should work, right? Uh, so let's try to do that. Run. Let me click outside first. Then I hold the control key and I click run. Uh, to run control run okay uh -huh. so let's go check our excel sheet now if anything has happened there uh, let me close my eyes and open it maybe it will show okay it looks like nothing has happened <laughs> But it's showing that I'm somewhere, like I'm here again or something. Let's go run it again. Maybe, you no, know, like I said, sometimes you have to do it twice. Okay, it didn't work this time around. So I don't know what the guy's problem is, but um, you've seen uh how it works if i if i had time i can go it has a troubleshoot part you can go in here and try to troubleshoot and if you feel that uh, you can go back to your main account main account go through my flows then you can it it will show you more see this is how you just it there, huh? so let's say i try to run it myself I try to run it right now. Uh, let's even check the run history and see what has happened. Oh, so I think the guy didn't run at all, even though we clicked run. So I'm going to go back here, go to edit, and check maybe there's something that has gone wrong for every entry here, uh, add row to select an output from the previous step <coughs> add row uh, why should this let this kind of output this is not the output i need what i need is the body yeah maybe that was why it didn't work yeah, yeah. so this looks more meaningful so let's go save now so save. Hopefully, maybe this was what was giving it code. You can also test it from here. Huh? Let's test. Manually. Uh, because we created it from Power BI. So let's go do the test again from here then. Run. Maybe he's doing something now. It really took a bit of time. Uh, how many more? Uh, 
at least you saw the steps. So the steps are correct. Well, why it's not running, I don't know. Uh, there are two it created. Let's go check the second one. Maybe the second one is the culprit. Huh? Uh, if it if that one too doesn't work, I will move to the other thing I had in mind. Location update the role. No, no, no. I'm not intending to update the role. So I'm going to delete this one because I'm going to delete this. I think it's better to delete it from here anyway, so that referential integrity is not lost or something. I only need one flow. I don't know why I did two. And that other one made no uh, There's no sense in this one. So I'm going to delete this one. Okay. So we're going to uh, apply this one. I think this one looked more meaningful when we checked it the other time. Then I'm going to do the run again. Okay. Officially, I don't know what is the problem. So uh, back to the demo, like back to my agenda. Aha, there's something else I want to do. I don't know if you have this problem, but me, it's something that I have as a problem. So I was hoping that we'll have time to create it together. I think I have like seven more minutes. So see, I have a, we have two, I have a personal blog, um, Twitter, Twitter account. Uh, thank God our government people, they don't watch anything that sounds too technical. So. They are not going to know that I use Twitter. They don't follow. I'm not the kind of person they are looking for. So I have a personal Twitter account, and then I have an organization. Where is the one I open is the organizational one, right? Then it's a personal. So I saw somewhere online somebody was showing images of. People hawking stuff like hawking gala and I say, hey, these are the what the Twitter influencers will be doing now. They now have to hit the streets and start hawking stuff. Because they have officially banned their source of livelihood. Maybe that's why this thing keeps rolling. So anyway, uh, let me show you what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be able to post whatever we post on our company blog. Huh? I've always wanted to be able to retweet it with my own personal account because my personal account has more followers than my company blog, right? Uh, one, and then also retweet it with the this other one that has even a lot more followers, right? So uh, I was hoping would I'll be able to do that today. There's another task I have, but this one looks more less less uh, cryptic. That one, that one looked too almost like maybe I'm the only one that it would be useful to. But this one, I think it can be useful to a lot of other people. So what do I do? I come here, I say I'm looking for Twitter. Fortunately, I don't use Facebook anymore, so I don't care about Facebook. But now maybe we have to care about Facebook. Huh? So I'm searching. When you click, uh, great. So it will show up all the, uh, maybe someone has asked me question or also. Oh, let me go check mine. <laughs> okay, my charm, I see what you're writing. <laughs> I'm sure that was when I talked about the login while and, and yeah, you something will work now if you're not working here. So uh do I want to run sentiment analysis? Do I want to send email about tweets? Do I want to share? No, what I want to do is I want to retweet. Do I want to post? I was using this one. I use this one. So I use this one whenever whatever we pull, pull, post on our blog. It will Twitter. It will tweet out on our on Twitter, right? Aha! This is what I need. I need retweets. So this is what I am looking for, and I actually need this. I've been wanting to do it. So this is an opportunity for me to eventually do it. So I think maybe this is where I'm supposed to turn on the VPN, right? Let's try. If it goes without a VPN, then um, so 
I need to, I've already connected some of my Twitter accounts. So you see it says I have my Twitter, this is the company account. So I wanted to connect the company Twitter account. So that whenever we tweet anything out on the company account, right? So he's asking, I don't know how this approval works anyway. Okay, it looks like I click approval and it approves. Okay, that's good. Well, then I wanted to, so when there's a new tweet, on this account, I want it to retweet on another account, my personal account. So, first, to everyone must approve. First, to respond. Okay, good. Retweet approval requests. I don't understand. It's not approval I'm looking for. Tweet when it. When in YouTube, post. Maybe it's the same thing, but I don't understand his English. This English look like. Anyway, let's go on. So, uh, assign to. Uh, assign to Michael. So once I approve. Yeah. So once I approve it, that's enough now. So it will, oh, okay, so it will trigger an approval. Once I approve it, then these other ones will happen. Okay, now it's beginning to make sense. So I wanted to retweet. So, but this retweet, uh, uh, is retweet I wanted to do. Because if I post it as a new tweet, uh, Twitter will ban me. Or if they can delete, uh, they can ban don't drone at trump and delete fg to not even to be as if they are waiting for me sir the bound will be very fast uh let's look for retweets retweet is what i need retweets retweet or or is it com comment or quote they call it text of the tweets tweeted by I want it to do an action it's not post a new tweet so I'm going to change the action I'm going to change the action to I want it to retweet I'm not trying to post a new tweet uh, retweet is what I want so retweet the tweet ID uh -huh. so this is what I want so I'm going to come here and delete this one delete yeah, yeah, yeah. get out uh so this is looking like it but i'm supposed to set the account huh it's not supposed to be retweeting his own tweets huh? so i need to set it that the account should be another account yeah so it should retweet a different account so let me connect uh hey that started again Everything, yeah. It's as if you're. It's as if you are watching TV, and they are playing, and they are, and they are doing your favorite series, uh, Papa Jasper and Company. And then that's when wind blew, and the area now turned to another direction, and everything is now doing one kind. Okay, so you've seen it. Uh, time is up. <laughs> so if this, if the login stuff did not blow up now. I will just connect it to my personal account, this one. We will now retweet that. But at least you see that it exists. It's just a matter of uh, it's just a matter of the uh, the reliability of some of the tools. But they keep the direction they are going is very big, and that's what they did with Power BI. Too. When they started Power BI, it was frustrating to use. Even to you can't select more than one column. Like it was a struggle. Nobody who used Tableau wanted to use Power BI. But now they've blown power Pablo out of the race. So I know they will keep improving it. Uh, we are the guinea pigs, they will use to know what needs uh, urgent, urgent improvement. So, but then again, uh, thank you for staying to this time. Any questions before I wrap up the session? And a special thanks to my boss, Mr. Macham.
I'm sure it's very, very late at night for you over there. So I really, really appreciate your joining. Uh, thanks to our regular people, uh, Monsieur Anthony, uh, Mr. Tunde, Oga okay, Victor, thanks. You really joined many of our sessions today, and even the one where you knew everything, sir. So you stayed to the end, so thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so thank you, everybody, and uh, let me not do advertisements today because <laughs> I've already taken your time. Huh? So see you next week. But uh, if you know anyone on this training in Power BI, Excel, and Financial Modeling, uh, we'll be happy if you let them know we exist and that's what we do. So bye bye. Have a nice Sunday, rest of the Sunday. And oh, it's 9 p.m. over there. Okay, so you're just two hours ahead of us. I keep thinking it's like three hours ahead. So good night. Bonsoir. Bye. Have a nice bye. week. Bonsoir. Merci beaucoup.